welcome to Switch. It's such a great privilege to have you in the house today. Um, I'm sure that you've had a lovely week and I look forward to having an awesome time with you. Um, we're going to be talking about a very, very interesting topic today. And so I'm going to ask that you lay aside all distractions. Uh, I want you to concentrate. I want you to prepare your heart uh, for the things that God will have you uh, experience at this service. Um, if you know someone that should be part of this uh, midweek event, I want to encourage you to signal the person right now. We're going to have an awesome time in the house. Um, the topic for today is the spice and the spoiler. How to make or maim your relationship. And some will wonder, what is a spice and what is a spoiler? Uh, let me give you a very simple definition of what a spice is. A spice is something that adds value. Whatever adds value, brings joy to your relationship, to your marriage, uh, is a spice. And a spoiler is whatever takes away value or diminishes uh, the joy in your relationship. What are those things as couples, what are those things as singles in, in a courtship or dating relationship uh, that we need to pay attention to? Those things that steal our joy, those things that diminish you know, the potential uh, of our relationship. What are those things that add value you know, to our marriages? What are those things that add value to our relationship with our, with our spouses? If we're able to recognize these things and just you know, uh, prevent the spoilers you know, and pay attention to how we can increase the level of spice in our relationship, we will all have such beautiful, fruitful, God honoring relationships. So uh, today I have an awesome crew with me on set. I'm going to be doing justice to this subject. We intend to take a deep dive as a no holds barred conversation, and um, I trust that you'll be tremendously blessed. So I'm going to do a quick introduction, and then we will get into the conversation. Uh, to my immediate uh, right is Ayo Lawrence. Ayo Lawrence is a professional counselor. She's been married for about 20 years now, and they're blessed with three kids. She calls them trailblazers. Okay, uh, Ayo, you're welcome to switch. Thank you. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Uh, next to Ayo is Yemi Pokwala. Yemi Pokwala is a behavioral, behavioral therapist. That's a mouthful. <laughs> She's married to Fusha Pokwala. They have three children uh, from a previous marriage. Uh, uh, Yemi is uh, in a blended marriage um, situation, and we're going to talk a bit about that uh, subsequently. And she has a daughter from her marriage. Yemi, welcome to Switch. Thank, Thank you, you for much. joining us on set. Next to Yemi is Juliet. Uh, Juliet is an HR professional. Uh, she's uh, been married for nine years and she has two kids. Uh, thank you very much for being on set. And uh, last but not the least, uh, we have a bloody single young man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Ejiro Esibone. He's a consultant. Yeah. And uh, like I said, he's single. And he's going to be representing that constituency, <laughs> you know, uh, powerfully uh, uh, today. So, so thank you very much, Ejiro, for joining this conversation. Thank and you, so Peter. right away, we're going to get into the... Uh, into the tick of um, our talk. There's so much to talk about, so much to unpack when it comes to spoilers and uh, spices. You know, um, if, uh, if I may ask you, Ejo, what, why do you feel, for instance, that a lot of you know, single people find it difficult to uh, commit to a relationship? Uh, they move from one uh, courtship or dating relationship to the other. Uh, what, what are the factors that sort of creates that you know, kind of experience in courtship. Um, thank you, PD. I think, hi everyone. <laughs> yeah, so I think that for many single people, um, there's the whole thing of trying to find the one, the person yeah. that it clicks with, the person that oh, makes you feel like, oh, this is it forever, because we all know that marriage is quite a commitment. You are committing mm -hmm. to be with somebody for the rest of your lives together, never to leave, always forgive. So people struggle with finding um, that the one. I think also um, sometimes it's an issue of um, clashing objectives. Will I say, or somebody arriving at a certain place before the other person. So you enter a relationship, the guy is still trying to figure things out, and maybe the girl, that's sort of cliche, but yeah, the girl feels like, okay, we can... I can go to the next level now, right. but the guy's like, oh, I'm not there yet. So objectives have clashed at that point, and then there's a separation. And to be honest, there's some people that are just irresponsible and okay. are actually just not ready to commit for reasons best known to them and are actually moving from relationship to one relationship to the other because they are meeting people who are responsible. So, yeah. yeah so, so don't you think there's a better way to approach the whole dating courtship you know, experience without uh, you know, experimenting in someone's heart? You know, uh, why don't you take your time to really get to know the person before you enter into a courtship relationship? In which case, 
uh, if you feel that this is not going to work, nobody's hurt. Why, why are we in such a hurry to start dating? Why are we in such a hurry to get into courtship? When you are not sure yet, you know, that you're really going to take that person, you know, uh, the whole way. I think, you know, we are from two different generations. Sorry to say Thank that. you for rubbing that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say I'm that. Go, yeah. But, but that's, that's a fact, right? And in our generation, it feels like there's a lot of pressure on young people to get moving. And so most of the time nowadays, if you're talking to somebody for one month, two months, and then it's like, oh, I just want to be friends, it's almost like you are slow. Like, oh, you don't know what you want. Why are you talking to me if you just want to be friends? Like, it's, it's almost like there's that thing. Especially when people are between the ages of 25 to 30, it's almost like, let's get this thing moving. If you, if you, don't, know, if you don't want it, why are you here? That kind of like, yeah, that's put a ring on it. If you, that kind of, there's that yeah. whole energy yeah. to friendships between two single people in this day. You take a girl on a date. You say, oh, I want to get to know you. It's almost like, what do you mean you take me on a date and then we are, there's nothing anymore? Like, right. what's happening? So there's that. I feel like because of that challenge and because of the perception of guys who go through that extended friendships, like, you're going to get into the friend zone, the bestie zone, people are more willing to just jump right into it after they feel any sort of connection. Yeah. And deal with the realities later. Because there are only two ways a relationship will end, yeah. in a marriage or in a breakup. Right. So it's like, we'll take this 50-50 risk and figure it out as we go. Yeah. So I feel like that's why. That's why. So, so Julian, I'm going to sort of, you know, ask that you speak to that as someone who belongs to the older generation. You know, uh, <laughs> that's you and I, you know, seem to represent here. And, and, and this is, the, you know, it gets interesting because I have a bit of concern that a lot of young people are very short-term in the way they view you know, courtship, dating, and marriage. Like, marriage is, a, is the end of the process, whereas it's actually the beginning, and that informs their attitude. Um, what would you say, you know, as someone who counsels single people, uh, how, how might they go about this and reduce the risk of, you know, these heartbreaks? Because they are spoilers, and this is what I mean. You're, you're, uh, every time you go through that cycle of courtship and dating and it, it doesn't work, something happens to you, happens to your capacity to love. So how would you advise someone to sort of approach this? We... We understand that principles that principles are timeless, you know, and, and there's a need to find a balance between yes, I represent a different generation and I really want to get it right. I'd love that you speak to that. And so it's lovely listening to, to Adrian because it's it resonates a lot, you know, with a lot of things that we speak about. Um, but what is important for, for the singles out there, especially, um, is understanding that it should be a friendship first. So you start as friends and you know, and then you build it up from there. So you don't go into a relationship with the with always having marriage as the end point. Go into it, understand who the person is, do we communicate effectively, what are their likes, what don't they like, you know, what are my non-negotiables, you know, in this relationship. It's very important to highlight that. Um, like you said rightly, when you go into a relationship with the intention of marriage, you start to act like you're about to get married. And even probably will scare the other party. And it's not just the ladies, Ejiro. I think it's also sometimes it could be the guys because yeah, there are so many fair. pressures nowadays. Yeah. You know, you have the society saying once you finish university and NYC and you have a job in a bank or wherever, you should be getting married. Right. You know, and your mother is telling you, are you not going to bring someone home? I want, <laughs> and, and all of that. So I think it's very important that you let it flow, you know, seamlessly. Go into it with, uh, with the mindset of friendship and then we can start looking at taking it to the next level once you've cemented that first level because friendship actually sustains marriage. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. So I'm going to come back to you on a few more questions around knowing yourself before trying to determine who's right for you. But, you know, uh, I'm going to just pivot from that. And I want to talk to married people. Uh, again, addressing this, this topic of spoilers and spices. Um, Ayo, you, you, you had an experience at some point in your marriage. Uh, you, definitely uh, infidelity or emotional affair is a, is a huge spoiler. And you have a story to tell in that regard. Would you share your experience with us? Yes, um, I'll, I'll be sharing my story. Um, early in our marriage, early 2000s, um, I had a relationship with, <coughs> excuse me, a younger believer, a younger Christian. Um, we were quite close. My husband wasn't so much around at that point in time. And, um, I wasn't in a nine to five job, so I had so much time on my hands. And things really, really, you know, we got really close. And we got to a point wherein I knew if I didn't um, halt it at that point in time, it was going to degenerate. So I had to actually open up to my husband. It wasn't that he found out. 
I was the one that, you know, told him about the relationship. We didn't really linger for too long. It was just for a few, few months, so to speak. And I had to open up to him to tell him what the issue was. And um, the day I told him, at first he was dumbfounded. He looked at me for some time as in, is it real? Are you sure? Then after that... What am I hearing? Yes. <laughs> then yeah. after that, he got upset. He got really, Brilliant. really angry. I was expecting that because when he first kept quiet, I was a bit scared, you know. So when he got, you know, really angry, I had to go on my knees and it was begging and all and all and all. And um, fortunately, we were able to handle it within ourselves. We had to call the other um, party in the, in, the, in the situation. And um, I had to severe all ties. I had to delete his phone number. I had to just ensure that there wasn't anything, you know, connecting myself and him and that went on for quite some time for me to heal properly for my husband to to heal it took us a long time you know for us to really really get over it we had to talk about it we had to pray about it we had was something we did not just um, um leave uncovered from time to time we we're revisiting it to be sure that you know we both had healed you know in the process and um Basically. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, let me start by thanking you for, you know, um, being willing to share this experience with us. And I'm sure that if someone who's watching there, uh, who you understand what she's talking about because you might just be in that situation with a guy or a lady. I think this is a conversation you want to take very, very seriously. I want to ask you a question. Uh, and, and I'm just wondering, how did you find the courage, you know, to to approach your husband to say, look, I want to have this conversation. Where did that come from? How are you able to do that? The people who are currently now trying to come out because they're tired of the situation they're in, but they just don't have that courage, the capacity to you know, step out or, or invite their spouse for that kind of conversation. How, how did you do that? Um, I think um, basically the fear of God. Um, let me use the word. I've always been a church girl. And you know, I've known God since I was a teenager. And having to find myself in that situation, I knew God wasn't pleased with me. So it was more of this thing is God happy with me. And it was just the fear of God and the fact that I loved my husband and I, 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 I knew he loved me and he still loves me for allowing me even to come on set to, to, to say this, you know, shows. So, so let me interrupt you. <laughs> what, what, was the potential consequence not a concern? You know, was that, as you were contemplating, did, 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 were the, the potential consequences not a deterrent? For okay, instance? for him, maybe he'll call the married quit. Maybe, maybe call the married quit or about, yeah, embarrass you some way. I didn't even think, think about, about that. The, all of that. I was much more um, um, concerned of my relationship with God. Right. Because that's very key. Hmm. Even if he says I should go, God still has me which is very important, and my peace. I want to be able to sleep with my two eyes closed. I want to be able to say that um, nothing is in the cupboard. Because I believe that there are no secrets. You can hide. At some point, it will definitely come out. Hmm. And I tell people that when you've done something with, an human be with a human being, so far the person is a human being, hmm. at some point it will come, come out. out. So I knew it was just a matter of time. At some point, it will come out. But apart from that, the fear of God, the fact that I just want to please God. Yes, I know I've erred. I know I've done what I shouldn't have done. But the fear of God kept me, you know, in that space of how you have to speak out. How you have to let him know. And apart from that, I knew if I didn't speak out at that point in time, I might get to a point where I would sleep with him. Because at that point in time, we yeah, hadn't, you know, physical. I knew if I didn't, you know, really speak up, I'll get to the point where I'm okay, So, so I, I have another question, which is what I, I suspect people who go through these kind of experiences deal with, you know, over and over again, where, okay, so I want out. I'm not sure this is heading anywhere, you know, meaningful and all of that, but you, you sort of feel you need the permission of the other person who you are with to, okay, okay, so let's stop this thing versus, look, maybe I'm ready and I, do, I don't need you to be ready. I just need to I need to get out of this because I know I'm not supposed to be. How did you deal with uh, 
the other person's feeling uh, about whether we should come out or we should stop this? What, was that I a consideration for you? I didn't even think about it twice. I just made up my mind. I didn't take his permission. I just went straight to my husband and said, this is what has been happening and I know it is wrong and I don't want to continue in this. Wow. So, so what would you say to someone out there who right now is dealing with all of this, lacks the courage, um, uh, tends to feel like I, I need the permission of you know, um, the other party, I, need, I don't want to embarrass the person or, or whatnot, or just because of the strong feelings that he or she has for that person is unable to uh, take any action without that person's consent, right? What would you say to that person? How, how, how should that person you know, you know, get out of the situation? But what you're saying now is that, look, you need to eat the cold turkey. It's, there's never going to be a perfect time to do this. You know, you know what you're doing is wrong. You need to be able to get up and call it quits. And I know that can be tough because yeah, you're emotionally connected tough. to this yes, person. Yeah. So tough. I need to speak to someone who's watching now who is in that kind of mess. Okay. I want to take it from two angles. I want to take it from the angle of you know your spouse and you know that if you walk up to him or her, he has the heart to take whatever you have to deliver. So if you have that kind of relationship, it may be okay for you to go ahead and just, you know, spill, spill it out. But if you find out that your your spouse is not that kind of a person, you will need to engage a third party. Right. And most likely you can engage a professional to help you in this situation, someone who is not biased, mm -hmm. someone who will not say, oh, it's my son or it's my daughter, mm -hmm. kind of. So that would help you to be able to handle that situation. Then I also tell people that it's always important to shame shame. You know, if you say that again. To shame shame. To shame shame. Yes. Okay. You know, to let shame know that you have no hold over me. I'll rather, you know, let it go and let it, you know, get done with it now than to continue to allow it fester. So for such an individual, yes, you've done something very shameful, but you can't afford to continue in it. You have to just come to terms with this is wrong, this shouldn't continue, and I'm ready to, to get out of it. Right yeah. Okay, so uh, another question I'd like to ask you, of course, you know, th there's a lot in this, so please permit me to tease out the learnings. Um, there are people who, they are skirting around this emotional affair. They're not yet really fully in it. And oftentimes, you know, you, you, we're in denial. I can handle it. You know, I know what I'm doing. What are the early signs? So, you know, someone's watching you right now. He, he or she's not in an emotional affair yet. But you're already skirting around the edges of this dangerous situation. What should I pay attention to? And when should I begin to tell myself the truth? You know, I often say to people, for example, that, you know, um, when you say you can handle it, are you waiting until you can't handle it before you want to do something about it? Because when you can handle it, that you should handle it, right? So, so please speak to that. Yes, I, um, in my own case, I thought I could handle it as well. Mm. You know, we're just friends, and that was it, you know. And um, for people who are in that situation, it's always best when you notice things like that happening you speak with your, your partner. And the science to it is when you begin to talk about this person much more in the home, we're having conversations in the house, he, his name or her name keeps popping up, can do this, can do that, and you, you can see that you're already diminishing your own spouse. Mm. You're already bringing the other person's um, strengths you know, to the fore, to the detriment of your spouse. Those are signs you need to watch out for. Oh, he speaks this way. Oh, I like the way he talks. You need to watch out for that. So that's, you know, some of the signs you mm. need to watch out for. Um, you're always thinking of, you know, calling the person, chatting the person or there's something, you have something to share. He or she is the first person in your mind that you want to share with. Those are the early signs, you know, so the fact that you're already drifting, you know, from your from your spouse, yes. And you're losing friendship with, with, with your spouse. spouse. You don't share deep things again. By the time you begin to see all that, know that you're ready. Awesome. So, so uh, it, for you and your husband to have been able to walk through this together, um, how much third party involvement did you have? None. None? Wow. Okay, okay. So, 
uh, I guess that also speaks to a strength in your relationship that we want to tease out. Um, wh what was it that you had laid in the foundation of a relationship that, and I'm coming to you, Joe, you know, very soon. What was it in your relationship uh, that you laid in the foundation of your relationship that helped you to weather this storm? You know how Jesus said a house that is built upon the rock, when the storms come and the winds blow and the house will stand. So this was definitely a storm. Uh, what was in the foundation of a relationship that we can all sort of learn from this that prepared your marriage to be able to weather that storm? Yeah. There was something I forgot to mention when I was talking about the fear of God. Um, when we started out, we made up our minds that there was, there were, we weren't going to have secrets. We had already told ourselves that. And when I began to keep secrets, it kept haunting me. Rayo, there shouldn't be secrets. We're already having secrets. We're already having secrets. So we had that at the foundation of our relationship that no secrets. Whatever it is, we bring it to the fore. Let's talk about it. Let's deal with it you know, together. So for us, that was really um, on the foundation. And then another thing is um, when we first got married, we weren't really close friends. So I guess that was part and of created the, yes, that the created the crack. You know? And now that I'm a professional counselor, I always you know, talk to that. You've got to be friends. So it was after that um, experience that we began to grow that friendship. We now became real friends, such that we can discuss anything, we can discuss everything. It wasn't like that in the beginning, you know. But after that major experience, that major shaking, we had to go back, we had to sit down and say, what's up? Where are we missing it? What are the challenges that we are having in this relationship. And we had to sit down and began to amend, you know, the things that had gone on. Amazing. Yeah. So, so I'm going to, we're going to pause at this, at this moment and I'd like to have you pray for someone that is watching uh, who is going through this situation. Um, you're, you're in an affair and you don't know how to get out. Or you're, you have discovered that your spouse is in an affair and you're, you're both looking for healing and trying to find your way out of it. Um, Ayo and her husband have been able to navigate this experience. And um, maybe there's someone you're watching, you, you want to talk, but you lack the strength. You, 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 you can't give voice to you know, the pain in your heart. Uh, this program is for you. And you may actually be sitting next to your spouse. You know, that's the interesting thing about it. So uh, the prayer we're going to pray now, I'm going to ask everybody, you know, whether you, you are in an affair or not, you know, uh, just to be able to give opportunity to that person who needs this prayer uh, to engage. I'll ask everybody, unless you're driving, to bow your heads uh, and say amen to these prayers. Um, I know that there are a lot of people out there uh, that need the help of God. They need the strength to be able to you know, come out of this situation to heal. And so, uh, Style, you're going to lead us in prayers. We'll pray for everybody, and then we'll move on with the conversation. It's over to you. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Father, for experiences of life you've allowed us to share, allowed me to share. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Lord, I lift up as many families as are going through this kind of challenge at this point in time. I decree, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that they find courage even to step out of every relationship that is not of you in mm -hmm. the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that those ones are strengthened to face their fears. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray these ones have understanding of what to do in the name of Jesus. Amen. That those things that they are afraid of begins to fade in the name of Jesus. Amen. And their home begins to experience healing, joy, laughter, peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Send them helpers, O oh God, in this season to hold their hands, O oh Lord. And to walk them through this stormy situation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for peace. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for fresh release of, of, of love in the hearts of your children in the name of Amen. Jesus. Father, we pray that you heal every hurt, O oh God. Cause your balm in Gilead to, to, to sweep through the hearts of your children in the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, do that which only you can do. And bring peace, joy, as you have helped my husband and myself. And you have made us blessings even to our world and our generation. Lord, we pray that the same is going to be the story of your children watching 
in the name of Jesus. Their lives will not remain the same. And they too will be able to testify shamelessly to the praise and glory of your name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, if, you, if you know you need to speak to someone, we have counselors on our, on our, on our, our various social media platforms that you can engage with. We're happy to talk to you um, and, and to minister to you and to just help you to take the next steps. I, I'm also sure that there are numbers that are scrolling. If you're watching on TV, uh, that you can reach out to via WhatsApp. Uh, but we'll be happy to engage with you and walk you through uh, this process. One thing is certain, God doesn't want you to stay the way you are. And there's always a way out. And today, God is, God is showing you your path out of that situation. God bless you. Um, thank you very much again, Sister Ayo. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, Adriel, I was going to come back to you. I was always going to come back to you. I mean, I haven't heard this. Uh, a big question is understanding that at the point where you are courting and, and, and planning to get married, you want to lay very solid foundations, you know, for your marriage. I mean, you, your, your scenario will be, be different from, you know, the type that Sister Ayo has spoken about. But one of the things that, you know, young you know, guys and ladies who are cutting need to begin to pay attention to now as they cut, you know, to ensure that they lay a very solid foundation for their marriage, that when storms come, you know, um, the, the investment you've made would enable you to be able to weather those storms so your marriage doesn't collapse, you know, under the pressure of those storms. What, do you, what are the things that you feel need to begin to pay attention to? I'm smiling because of the way everybody's just <laughs> looking at me. <laughs> Please go ahead. All right. Um, thank you, PD. I think that for people in my category, single people, the first thing is to step back from the frenzy and really like question some of the things that we believe about marriage and relationships. One of which is that marriage in itself is an end goal. It's like, oh, let's get married to this fantastic person that we can take nice pictures with just for the sake of having a beautiful wedding without really thinking about the longevity of marriage in itself. Um, and so that takes us to the principles. What are the foundational principles for a long relationship? Friendship and communication. And so, um, as you said earlier, when we were having a conversation before on principles, you were speaking about the fact that principles are like a light tower, and we're supposed to head towards the light tower, not try to get the light tower to come to us so we avoid the rocks. And so if we invest in communicating and building friendships, um, that's, those are things that would make for good or solid relationships. Um, and maybe also in addition is also like picking interest or finding interest in the things that our partners find interest in. I can use myself for an example. Oh, you have partner, a partner that is really into fashion and things like that, but you don't have a natural inclination for it. But just invest the time, just invest the time and the effort in those things that your partner likes would also like work for you because if they need to talk to somebody about something and they can't talk to you, then there already there's a problem. So yeah. Thank you very much, Ejo. Thank you. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, so Yemi, I'm, I'm going to sort of uh, take it, but I know you also have some kind of story to share. Uh, you're, you're blessed to be part of a blended family. And in case someone's wondering what a blended family is, a blended family essentially is a family where uh, a, a party, a partner in the family already has children out of another relationship. And, and you're, you're, you're married to a handsome young man. Yeah. yeah. Tall, dark, and handsome. Tall, dark, and handsome who, who already had three kids, I believe, you know, uh, from a previous marriage. is divorced. And um, you, you got into that relationship. Just share your experience, you know. Um, so this person, I can say, is, is coming out of a, um, if you like, if you like a better word, you were talking about spoilers and spices. Things have spoiled a bit, you know and you're, you're trying to rebuild things. How, how are you able to navigate this treacherous waters? I'm a spice. So what it is is that um, when we started dating, or rather when we became friendlier, we were friends a long while back, then I was out of the country and then I came back and then we became friends again. I was becoming friendly. I, I wasn't focused on getting married to him. I had other, sea, other fishes in the ocean, in my right. ocean at that time. I had 
tons of friends and well a couple of friends who were look, talking to me about the same thing so i wasn't really focused on that but from the day that he actually voiced out that this is what i would like from you i started to have a deeper look at i've never thought considered marrying or not marrying somebody who was previously married it wasn't something that was in my horizon of thoughts but the way god works he had prepared me i guess because when i left uni and I moved to Lagos, I lived in a house that was a blended family. So I knew the kind of damage that could happen to one if you lived in that. And then also, so meeting with him, coming back to the present, or well, coming back to maybe like 10 years ago, he had children who were older. I had God that also helped me in that I'd worked a long time with teenagers and younger people. So I had an understanding of various issues that would come up. And so my focus, or like most people will tell you, and people used to ask me, so did you investigate what really happened in his previous marriage? Did you, you know, investigate his ex? Did you find ask someone to find out? I didn't do any of that. I just faced the person that I was going to have a relationship with. And the reason I did that was because, just like you said, spoiler, you know, so something has spoiled. It doesn't define you. You know, so divorce, the fact that he was divorced was not, for me, a definition. My objective was, does this person meet the kind of criteria that I've set for myself in terms of what I wanted to, the kind of life I wanted to live long term? The only thing that gave me a bit of what it called was, would I be able to cope with stepchildren? And we had a long discussion. I was telling my, we were talking about it and laughing. So we started the conversation about 11 p.m., and at 6, 6.30 in the morning, he just said, you know what, I need to get into the shower, otherwise I'll be late for work. And so we had this long discussion about what kind of relationship do you expect from me with, with your children? What kind of um, life do you envisage for us? Because we're going to have children and all that. And I told him my own point of view as well and what I was willing to do in terms of that relationship. Should I share what so, I so, so I was just going to say, I, I, I was thinking of how to not interrupt you at the same time. There are things I wanted to sort of begin to just uh, draw attention to that I felt you may need to speak to as someone, uh, someone is watching you now. And this was your own first relationship. You had not been married before. No, I hadn't been married. So, you know, there are people who feel that, look, if I'm going to get married, why do I want to marry someone who's divorced or who's... Uh, we do, you know, um, we, we tend to label people like that, like they are, they are um, for lack of a better word, you know, the way you have a brand new car and a Tokumbo car kind of thing. And a uh, Tokumbo in our climb is a car that has been, you know, used, used, you know, fairly used. And uh, we extend that same attitude to a single parent, a single mom, a single dad who probably had a child out of wedlock. We just sort of profile them as no-go areas. You know, and it seems to me like we, we miss out on tremendous opportunities to meet wonderful, fantastic people yeah. because we've just labeled them. And I'd like you to speak to that because here you are, a uh, single person, um, not that you are divorced and you felt, okay, look, I'm divorced, you're divorced. How convenient. Let's just, you know, uh, how come you were very open to that kind of relationship? Um, and what would you say to someone who, for instance, has just blocked that out of their mind? So... In my own family, extended, I don't know of anybody who was divorced. So it wasn't like it was something that I was used to. Right. But it just didn't make, it's never made sense to me when I meet people who say, oh, they can never date somebody who's been divorced, widowed, a single parent. Because I'm thinking to myself, so you have a wide pool of the opposite sex. And you've narrowed, you've narrowed down your choices to choice A. You know, because sometimes multiple choice questions are, a, B, C, or all of the above. Mm -hmm. And so God has given you all of the above, but insist on choosing just from this, um, this um, pool, pool yeah. of people. And um, it just doesn't make sense to me. If you're, I think what you should be focused on is who the person is. Labels are just labels. We're not necessarily defined by how we've lived our lives. We're defined by what, what we are now and where we're going. And so if you now, if you just restrict, my mother, sorry, my mom didn't believe in getting married to a divorced person. person. So I even had to send someone to tell her that 
the guy was divorced. I had to, you know, I had to send, you know, but it didn't stop me because I, I didn't understand the, I didn't understand the, I still don't understand the reason. And honestly, I'm, I'm married to a fantastic man and he's, um, he's fast. I don't know all that happened in his previous marriage. Obviously, if he talked to his ex, he wasn't such a fantastic man. So maybe he's developed himself, maybe he's improved, whatever it is, but he's definitely the right person for me. So, that's awesome. so, so something else I'm going to pick from what you've said is, I mean, thank you for that, is that it seemed to me like it wasn't that you didn't have to deal with all of that resistance from family members, even maybe friends and all of that, but you sort of owned that process. Yes. I, I, this is what I want to do, and I'm going to make it work. And I think that's something people need to understand, that you know, when you pander so much to uh, what would my dad say, what would my mom say, I'm not saying their opinions are, and their concerns are not important, because these people, I mean, they are concerned because they love us, you know. But just understanding that when it comes to some of these decisions, I need to own the process to make it work if I feel convinced that this is the way to go. And, you know, the, the, the follow-up question is, so, yeah, you own that process, but it comes with its challenges. Like, so you have um, children that are not, yeah, they are stepchildren. You have, you know, a, a man that is still dealing with uh, the issues from his previous marriage and the, the likelihood of all of that, you know, just coloring your relationship. And here you are, so you're trying to settle down, build your family. How did you deal with all of that, all the potential spoilers that are staring you in the face? Okay. So one of the major challenges, if you're married to somebody who's been previously married, is that you run the risk of all the hurt and bitterness or whatever comes straight to you. You know, it just flows over into your own relationship. So one of the things that I was very mindful of when he asked me was that, we'll remain friends. I like you as well, but we'll remain friends until I am sure that you're no longer hurt or angry about you know issues that affect your ex and then when we were still friends i could tell when he had been to see his children in his ex's house because he so he would come really you know ten, very tense very angry very and i would tell him that you know nothing can happen between us because you're still emotionally vested in that relationship and i'm not going to and I, that's one thing i would say if you're fearful of um marrying somebody who was previously married whether either because the person was widowed or the person was cheated and therefore became a single parent or whatever so your circumstance, you need to make sure that your partner has healed before you continue your own relationship with the person because otherwise you're bringing a lot of spoilers. Those are natural spoilers. Another thing was that um, I needed to deal with his own, with my relationship with his family because obviously... There will be people who will be for the ex, and there will be people who will be, you know, it's like, okay, so he left that person and he couldn't do better than this, kind of. <laughs> you understand? And then there will be people who are just there waiting and watching to see where we followed him to the first one and it didn't really work out. So we'd rather reserve judgment and we'll just be cold and what's it called towards you. So there are a lot of things that come with it. But the one thing I'd like to say is um, God gives grace. God gives grace. There's a, we talked a lot about agape love when we were just chatting before this event. And um, God has given each and every one of us a capacity to love, to forgive, to accept a lot of things. And as long as you continue working in that love, so many things will happen. I have friends, I've met people who are stepmothers now, and they tend to go down the route of the typical stepmother role. A funny aside, the first day my daughter discovered that I was a stepmom, she cried because in her mind, I was telling her that I was a wicked person because that's all she had ever heard. And generally speaking, a lot of women tend to fall into, or parents, step parents fall into that because they have not understood the concept of enlarging your heart. I find it very strange when somebody comes to report their stepchild and I'm like, but you're in your 30s or you're in your 40s and you're fighting with a, an 11-year-old child. Does this make sense to you? So if you start seeing your stepchildren as what well, they are, children who are hurting, who, you know, whose lives have been turned upside down and what's it called, and you recognize all that, it helps you to build the capacity to even love them extra because they've been through things that they had, they, it wasn't their fault, they had no business 
been in that situation. So I think those things kind of like molded my thoughts. Thank you. You've spoken like a true spice. <laughs> uh, God bless you for that. Um, and and I, I, would, I would like also for you to sort of just say a quick prayer for someone who is in this kind of situation uh, right now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm married and it's a bit complicated and I'm struggling to manage, you know, the children, my stepchildren. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with, you know, maybe the lack of trust or the anger issues with this person uh, I'm married to. And the ex is there in some cases. In some other cases, it's like I'm trying to make up my mind, you know, I'm in this situation. And it's an option that is on the table. I just need direction and clarity. Do I have the capacity to, to navigate through all of this? Um, uh, there are people who are uh, more mature single people. I know I bit just narrow their perspective to, you know, the options that are on the table. And maybe God has been trying to get their attention to see that, look, there are people I have prepared for you. And it may not fit into your stereotype of what my husband or my wife should look like. But God is saying, look, you mean there's a jewel in this person. And we see stories like that. Um, um, Ruth in the Bible, Esther in the Bible, these people had colored pasts, but it didn't affect their future. Uh, that you just pray that someone will be able to also recognize what God is doing and be able to follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Should that be the direction in which God is guiding them? And just any other, you know, way God is stirring your heart. So if you're watching and you fall into any of this category, this prayer is for you, and I trust that something significant is going to happen in your life. Uh, please take the just lead us in prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for this season that everyone who is in any of these situations is in right now. First of all, we want to lift up everyone. We want to pray with everyone who is going through hurt, has not fully recovered from their previous relationship, and they're already in another one, and it's acting out in that relationship. Lord, today we want to ask for healing. We want to ask, Lord, that you will open their eyes to see that they're actually hurting or that they need to amend things and they will take steps to amend that in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we also want to pray for people who are in relationships, who are already in um, this kind of relationships and who are having a difficult time finding their way, being able to navigate in this whole st strange family environment. My Father, as you gave me wisdom, I pray for wisdom for everyone in this situation in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit that has shed abroad in our hearts your love will show them how to use that love and extend that love to everything and everybody and every relationship that they're involved with concerning this marriage in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for every child in these relationships that, Lord, you will give grace to them that they themselves will heal in Jesus' name. I want to pray for um, stepmothers, stepfathers. Even as they're carers, sometimes I know that it can be that you're your effort is um, unrecognized or even disdained. But I pray that the Lord will continue to enlarge your coast, that the Lord will continue to give you strength, that you will continue, that the Lord will show you ways in which you can heal and restore relationships that you have, may have broken because of um, all of this. And I pray for every marriage that is going on right now, that in the name of Jesus, every bad attitude that we may have brought, every baggage that has come in because of previous relationships, that the Lord will heal, the Lord will help us to remove, the Lord will give us wisdom, He will lead us to the right counselors, the Holy Spirit to order our steps to the right people and to have the right conversations with our spouses. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Awesome. I mean, this is really a um, great experience we're having on set and I can sense uh, the Spirit of God is doing amazing things in, 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 on this set and in your life. Uh, Juliet, I have a question for you and it's you know, it's a lot embodied in one question. Uh, I, I, I suspect that um, there are seasons in a relationship, a married relationship, and probably even a dating relationship for single people, where a marriage is more vulnerable. Uh, there are times when, when a marriage is, when a couple are going through some kind of financial pressure, uh, the marriage will be more vulnerable at the time. Uh, there are times when, you know, maybe it's pressure from work, you know, on either of the spouses can make the marriage a little bit more vulnerable uh, and, and, you know, spoilers can easily begin to play out. There are times when distance can be a factor. And I, I know that you're, you're right now in a season of your life where your husband is, he's a pilot, so he's not always around. Uh, he, he flies an international carrier. And so uh, there's distance in your relationship. And that can increase the vulnerability, you know, that people who have spouses who are 
doing MBAs or doing some master's degree abroad and, and the, the other partner is in another country. And you, you know that that just increases. And there are many scenarios that we can paint that just tend to make a marriage more vulnerable and more exposed to spoilers. Uh, what should, how should a couple behave when you know that your marriage is going through a season where you are most like you are, you are, you are more vulnerable than you ordinarily would be? How, how should a couple, you know, um, deal in that season? What should they pay attention to? How do they ensure that, you know, things don't fall apart? Okay, so thank you very much, PD. Um, I'd like to first of all say that, back to my first point around friendship, I think we should just never forget um, that we were friends first and always have some sort of friendship meter to continue to analyze the relationship on that friendship level. It is critical. I don't think any, any counselor will tell you anything different that you constantly come back to the friendship stage and make sure that your relationship is fresh. It is a constant um, in, in any relationship. Um, I'd also say that it's important that um, you actually accept that you could be vulnerable. So we're not in denial, where you're thinking that, oh no, we can coast this, we'll get through this period. It's not just three months. No, it's important to accept that you're vulnerable because once you've accepted that there's an issue, you can then start putting in um, solutions um, to, to deal. So I think it's very, very critical that you first of all go back to the whole friendship phase and then start accepting that there's a problem and then you can start looking at how to fix and whatever the issue is. Um, I think it's also important to have the right um, sphere of influence or the right people around you. Um, and it may not be the friend who is actually envying your relationship, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's probably very important that you look you know, towards someone that's probably experienced something that you've also been through or going through, sorry, um, and also maybe someone in the church um, counseling unit, um, one of the pastors, um, somebody in your, maybe in the women's ministry or maybe in the men's ministry, um, it's important to confide in someone who you know will be objective, you know, who will say to you that, look, you need to start doing a checklist around your relationship so that you don't make this crack even wider. Um, so that, that's what I would say about that. Okay. I mean, also, thank you. I'm also thinking about how in, in relationship we, we speak about guardrails, you know, why things you want to proactively put in place as a couple just to ensure that your marriage is protected from intruders, you know, and how to sort of keep those guardrails up, you know, such that, you know, it, it tends to, to come across like, uh, even when you do have those guardrails, there's some measure of effort you need to, you put in place to ensure that you keep them up because it can easily, you know, uh, give way at some point. Maybe I should start with Edu, you, you know, uh, as a single person. You know, what would you say, for instance, um, as a young person, you consider important guardrails to put around the relationship to protect it from, you know, intruders and to sort of preserve into marriage and, you know, as, you, as you, your marriage grows and you have children, you're just sure that um, at any given point in time, uh, if whatever season your marriage is in, you are, there's a protective edge and, and it's something that yourself and your spouse have deliberately put in place. What, what, would, what, what would you say to that? I think, I'll, I, think I have one. Okay. Um, and I think that's conflict resolution. So how do you deal with challenges? How do you deal with fights? How do you deal with quarrels? How do you deal with disagreements? I think that that's one of the like, biggest ways to create a gap. If you keep on piling, I've, I've been with someone who used to like, pile it all up, and then there'll be an explosion sometime. Like, oh, this guy, I'm like, we're talking about bread. Why are you so angry? And it's like, oh, the bread, and the other day, the car, and the other last year. So, like, all of that piled up, like, venting. Right. So, I feel like it's better to learn healthy conflict resolution right. and learn to deal with things fast so that both of you move on and you don't create, like, a wide gap where there shouldn't be one. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, you, you, what, what, what would be a guardrail for you? So, you said conflict resolution, resolution right? What would be a guardrail for you? Um, so, I'll definitely take that one as well from you. I'll steal that one from you because that's a critical point. Um, but I think for me, one of the biggest ones is prayer. Uh, making sure that your prayer life remains balanced um, as a couple and as a family as well. Because, you know, I think prayer has a way of making you realize if you're in check or not. So constantly make sure that your prayer life, and obviously with a distant relationship like mine, um, we try and make sure that that, that is very constant. Um, another big one is communication. Mm. It's critical. Um, and I'm talking about communicating about absolutely anything and everything. It could be something as small as, I was in traffic today, and that's why I'm a bit, you know, I'm not too, too happy right now. It could be something as, mo as small as, oh, that investment, what should we do about it? Constantly making sure that we're communicating. And another big one is also showing interest 
in whatever your spouse is into. I think AJ we touched on that a bit earlier on. Where if you have a husband or a wife who has a job that's quite stressful, it would be nice if you also are interested and even maybe know a little bit. Where when you're having a conversation, you're able to even proper solutions. Maybe they may even, you know, he may come home or she may come home, may, may, you know, very kind of angry or depressed or whatever. But it's important that you're able to have a conversation around their interests. So it's not always, oh, okay, is that all? And then you stop it there. So those three are, are important guardrails in any relationship. So on, on that note of intentionality, I'm going to sort of repackage the question. I mean, it's still be a guardrail, but um, one of the things I, I, I have come to recognize uh, with um, relationships is that ignorance is actually a spoiler. And knowledge is a spice. And, but the problem oftentimes is that the um, ignorant people at times are not aware of their ignorance. You know, so I'm here essentially just, you, you spoke about being intentional. Intentionality is going after relevant knowledge to be able to become a better husband, a better wife, know how to raise children, know how to manage, you know, finances at home and all of that. Some people just tend to essentially you know, fly by the seat of their pants. It's, whichever way it comes to me is, you know, and I can defend it, you know, or just say, well, that's how X is doing it. That's how, you know, Y is doing it. So, and it, it eventually begins to, you know, affect the relationship in different ways because yeah, you're not, uh, you're not X's husband or X's wife. You don't know the basic, you don't understand their context, you know, and you're trying to reproduce uh, something that is a method, not a principle. Uh, I like to speak to just the importance of you know, knowledge, going after knowledge in marriage, you know, because ignorance can be a major spoiler. Okay. The one thing I know that I'd never experienced before was being a stepmother or being in a blended family. And unfortunately, um, at the time that I was getting married, it wasn't something that was really talked about in church. So I didn't really know who to talk to, how to go about it. So I went online. And um, I attended a few um, webinars, a couple of webinars. And then I subscribed to the few, the few for if you're thinking about having a blended family or joining one, there are a few websites. There's blendedfamily.com, there's the familylife.com as well, and things like that. And so I read up a lot, and it helped me to manage some of my expectations. I don't, if you recall, I said one of my expectations was because I knew what not to do as a stepmother. I was so, I was so sure that I was going to be a fantastic stepmother and I was willing to show everybody that I was a fantastic stepmother. And it turned out that my kids were not ready to be step, uh, my stepkids were not ready to be stepchildren. So they were not as warming towards me as I felt towards them. It was not the person. Von Trapp family. No, we were not, <laughs> you know, so, um, but fortunately, going through, going through just by reading up and everything, I realized that what I had always known, but I didn't apply to this, is that you can't force a relationship. Relationships come and evolve by themselves. So it helps me to, like, um, I want to borrow your word, frenzy, and step back from my, you know, frenzied effort to start a family that was well blended and a sample to other Christians. And I just, it just helped me to step back and reflect more on my own circumstances just by reading. So not seeking for knowledge is, I think it's without question, a lifesaver in relationship management. Thank you very much, Amy, for that. And thank you everyone for your awesome contributions and conversation today. We could go on and on and on, but uh, we're completely out of time. And I trust that you have been tremendously blessed. Um, wherever you are, please help me celebrate and appreciate everyone who's spoken this evening and, and who has, I'm sure, blessed you one way or the other. Please stand by. We're going to break bread. We're going to pray before we bring the service to a close. Don't go anywhere. All right. Thank you. Praise God. I'm sure you were blessed by that session and the word of God came through to you powerfully. I want to just read a portion of scripture from the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, from verse 2 to 3. I'm reading the New King James Version. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, from verse 2 to 3. It says, Like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down in his shade with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. It says, like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. This is uh, the, uh, a, a man sort of appreciating 
um, the, the woman in his life. He says she's like a lily among thorns. And then the lady goes to say, like an apple tree among the trees of a wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I want you to think about your husband, your wife, your, the person you're courting. And I want you this moment to just think about what you love the most about them, what you appreciate about them, what you rec the goodness you, you see in them, uh, the beauty that you found in them. And I want you to take the next couple of minutes to just really genuinely appreciate them. The person sitting next to you, I want you to look at that person and celebrate them for uh, their virtue, celebrate them for who they are, celebrate them for the beautiful things uh, you've come to discover about them. Oftentimes, we uh, overemphasize, overemphasize the things that we don't like at the detriment of the things that are beautiful, that are even a lot more prominent in the lives of our spouses. And I don't want you to say stuff like, oh, you cook great meals or you pay to children's school fees. Uh, that's what they do. I like you to speak to things like their heart. You're kind, you're generous, um, you're supportive, um, you, are, you are loving, you are, you are considerate, you know, things like that. And I want you to um, acknowledge your spouse. I want you to acknowledge them for who they are. Uh, it, it's a, a fantastic moment to just, you know, share uh, your appreciation for your spouse with them at this time. And if it's someone that is far away from you, maybe your spouse is not in the country uh, where you reside or you are still caught in this person, so the person is not with you, send them a WhatsApp message and just say, you know, I was just thinking about you and I thank you for being this kind, for being this loving, for being this considerate, for being this generous and whatever it is that you, you, you celebrate and you um, appreciate about that person. And as you do that, I, I believe that um, you are intentionally spicing up your relationship. That's, that's, that's a very fantastic thing to do at a time like this. I don't want to take time to pray with you at this time. I don't know what situation you represent, and I don't know where your relationship is at right now. But one thing I know for sure is that it can always get better. The Bible says that the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Uh, so let's let's pray. I want you to speak a blessing over your spouse, speak a blessing over your marriage at this time. I want you to pray for that young man, for that young woman who you are you are courting right now. And I want you to declare in the name of Jesus that your path will shine brighter. Declare in the name of Jesus that the wisdom of God will attend to you, uh, that you would you would invest in the relationship, the things that will cause this relationship to be a God honoring relationship, it will be a relationship that is fruitful, that brings forth fruits, that, that glorifies God. I want you to pray for your children. I want you to pray for your spouse's career. I want you to pray for their aspirations. And, and I want you to pray even about their relationship with God. I want to commit them into God's hands. I want you to declare that in this season, uh, their love for God will increase, uh, that their reverence for God will multiply in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray uh, and, and, and pray selflessly for your partner. Pray selflessly for your husband. Pray selflessly uh, for your wife. I want you to pray that God will increase them more and more, that God's grace will multiply in their lives. I want you to pray for your home, uh, that your home will be a place of divine presence, a place of peace, a place of prosperity in the name of Jesus. Are there situations or challenges that you're confronting right now in your marriage, that you're confronting right now in your relationship? I want you to commit it to God's hand. Um, the all-wise God, the one that is able to turn uh, impossible situations around, is stepping into that situation for you and is calming every storm, is, is, is enabling solutions at this moment in the name of Jesus. I want you to uh, commit whatever that circumstances into God's hand and choose not to worry about it anymore. Choose not to be anxious about it anymore. Let the wisdom of God and let the power of God come into that situation and turn things around for you. And as you pray, uh, God will begin to inspire you. The Holy Spirit will begin to minister to you how you may want to proceed. Uh, as you pray also, I want you to know that uh, part of what the Spirit of God would enable you to recognize is that there, there are avenues and opportunities to leverage the, the, the leadership of, of, of your local assembly and the leadership of the Elevation Church, if you're part of this church, to help you navigate this challenging season and that you will reach out and receive the help that God has already made available for you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. We bless your name forever. I thank you for my brother. I thank you for my sister. I thank you, Lord, because uh, a new season in their relationship just started this very minute. And it's a season of bliss. It's a season of blessings. It's a season of increase. It's a season of peace and prosperity. It's a season of progress. It's a season of greater abounding love. It's a season of deeper fellowship, deeper communion in the name of Jesus. For this, Father, we give you thanks and praise. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. 
right? Um, I, I want to pray with someone uh, this, this, this moment who may not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You're here and you're watching this program and, and a major challenge you have right now is that you are not connected with God. It's really uh, difficult to be able to navigate the, the waters of marriage uh, and, uh, you know, parenting without the help of God. It's very difficult for you to be a role model to your children. Uh, to, to enable them to live a life of purpose when you don't know the author of life and the giver of purpose himself. And so I want to give you an opportunity this, this, this moment to open up your heart and, and receive the love of God. Um, that sin that you're struggling with, it is not just because um, you want to sin, it's because you have a sin nature that needs to be dealt with. And Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, died for your sin and it, it destroyed the hold of sin over our lives and is ready right now to help you embrace newness of life. So if you're, if you're watching right now, you're not born again. You do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'd like that you say this prayer uh, with me. I want to just repeat after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins and that you raised him up for my justification. Therefore, I declare Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I ask that you forgive me. I ask that you wash me in the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I declare that I'm saved in Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray with you. Father, thank you for everyone under the influence of my voice who has said this prayer. I break the hold of sin over their lives. I declare in the name of Jesus that they are translated from darkness into light, that they are established in your courts, and that their life brings forth fruits to the praise of your glorious name. For this, we give you thanks and praise, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. Um, very, very quickly, we're going to be breaking bread. Uh, we're going to be taking the communion. Uh, we'll be partaking of the body and of the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So if you have um, any material with, with you that you can take communion with water, uh, wine, uh, juice, please just bring it out. Um, if you have biscuits, you have bread, you have nuts, whatever it is uh, that can represent the body, um, I want you to bring it out. Now, as we as you partake of the communion, I know I want you to know that you are actually take partaking of the body. Um, what you're holding is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and what you are carrying in that glass or in that cup you're holding is the blood of Jesus. As we pray, that's what is going to become. And as we partake of this, we are reminded of the covenant that we have in Christ. And I thank you. We lift up this communion element and we declare this as your body uh, that was broken for us and your blood that was shed. We partake of this communion and we are reminded of the love that you have for us as your sons and daughters, the love that you have for the church, that same love that you have shed in our hearts. And I pray that as your sons and daughters partake of this, uh, that their love for their families, their love for their spouses is rekindled. Should there be someone who is struggling right now uh, to find forgiveness in their heart, someone who is struggling right now to find healing uh, in their heart because of past pains and, and hurts, as you partake of this communion, Lord, let there be healing. As you partake of this communion, we command every raging storm uh, in, in, the, in the homes of your sons and daughters to, to be calm, to cease in Jesus' name. As we partake of this communion also, Lord, we receive wisdom, wisdom to uh, to, to engage with our spouses, wisdom to lead our homes, wisdom uh, to resolve differences, wisdom to build a, a solid, to lay a solid foundation for our families, wisdom to be uh, responsible, God-honoring parents to our children in the name of Jesus. Uh, we, you will not be confused as a father. You will not be confused as a mother. You will not be confused as a man or woman in relationship. Your, your steps are ordered of God. He guides your path. Uh, he speaks to you in the mornings. He speaks to you late in the night, just helping you to be able to understand uh, his expectations for your life. And as you partake of this communion, I declare that your eyes will never be, 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 be blind and your ears will never be blocked in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I trust that you've had a beautiful, beautiful service today. And uh, we do not conclude our worship without spending time uh, to worship our God with our substance, our tithes, our offerings, our special seeds. So this is an excellent time for you to package your offerings. Um, all the uh, accounts that you can um, give into are displayed on the screen at this time. If you're watching from um, uh, 
outside Nigeria. The account details that you can use are also up on the screen, and you can avail yourself of this opportunity to just worship God with your, your seed. Uh, would you package your seed at, at this moment? And I'd like to pray um, with you as you do that. Lord, I thank you uh, for this opportunity to honor you with our substance, our tithes, our offerings, our special seed. We, it's always such a privilege to express our love for you through our gifts. It's always such a privilege to demonstrate our commitment to the advancement of the kingdom by laying our substance at your feet. And that is what we're doing at this time. Accept our offerings. May they ascend before your throne as a sweet-smelling aroma that is pleasant in your sight. And we trust you, Lord, for corresponding harvest as you have promised in your word. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you very much for being a part of Switch today. I trust that you have been blessed. Look forward to seeing you next week. Um, until then, God bless you. Have a fantastic day. I trust that you've had a wonderful time in God's presence. I believe God that you will have a testimony to share in the very near future. And when that happens, please share with us by sending an email to testimonies at elevationng.org. Please join us for our morning prayers, Monday to Saturday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. West African time on Zoom and Mixellar. The links are now displayed. Join us next Wednesday for a special worship experience and thank God for our relationships, marriages, and how far he has brought us this year. Our annual singles event, The Hangout, is here again. And this time, it will hold strictly online this Friday, the 25th of September at 6.30 p.m. And Saturday, the 26th of September at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. It will be a time to interact, network, connect, and learn about nurturing, wholesome, and healthy relationships. This event will feature our very own Pastor Godman Akilabi and other pastors such as Jada Edwards, Kunle Oshunkule, Kinsley Ebulem Obom, Debo Omotunde, there will also be comedy and music by Kenny Black, Forever MC, and P4 String Quartet. So register now at singles.elevationng.org. Please know that this event is strictly for singles. Exciting news for the couples in the house. Our annual vows renewal event is here again. This year, it holds online, so get ready for a great event themed for Better For Worse Forever this Saturday, the 26th of September, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. on Zoom, YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. Register now via the link displayed. Membership class holds this Saturday, the 26th of September at 8 a.m. online. To become a registered member of the Elevation Church, please register via the link now displayed. Night of Increase, our quarterly vigil is here again. It holds online on Friday, the 2nd of October at 7 p.m. prompts. It will stream live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Mixella at Elevation NG. Invite your friends, family, colleagues, and get set for an encounter with God. In case you missed it, physical services for adults have resumed every Sunday across our island, mainland, Greater Lekki, Ikorodu, and Life Point centers. We'll be excited to see you in church, so if you're coming, please book your seat in advance for crowd control purposes on elevationng.org forward slash book your seats. The portal opens every Friday at noon. Please note that the kids and teenagers services will continue to hold online. Remember that you can be a vibrant part of our online community by visiting onlinechurch.elevationng.org where you can interact with us, find resources, and make vital connections. And if you'd like to connect with other believers in a smaller setting, please join one of our online small groups by sending an email to smallgroups at elevationng.org. We are just an email and a call away, so send us a mail to info at elevationng.org or call us on 0700 Elevate. That is 0700-353-8283. Finally, join us this Sunday on TV or any of our social media platforms for any of our services. All the service times are now being displayed on the screen. Stay safe, God bless you, and enjoy the rest of your week. Did you know that we also broadcast our services on TV? That's right. You can save some precious data and watch us on the following channels. Always have a beyond 
the ordinary experience if you place your faith in the supernatural. I'm very glad you have decided to embark on this study we're called Pleasing God. Uh, sometimes we forget that our relationship with God is symbiotic. We can be so laser focused on getting from God that we forget that we were created for His good pleasure. So, just as we would love to be pleased by Him, by God, He also wants to be pleased by us. Uh, and as, as we go on together in this study, we will learn how to please God.